Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, is Girls' Night Out okay or a red flag? Well, I've got an email. This particular guy has been following my work for three years, and he says he's now on the 13th read of 3% Man. And so he's got some questions because he's come across some of the stuff in the Red Pill community talking about this, and he wants to know... What, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate for like a girl's night out type of thing? Because as you probably heard me say many, many, many times, character is destiny. And so when you're dating, especially if you're one of the guys that wants to get married and involve the government in your relationship, you got to know what you're dealing with. You're trying to properly vet the girl to see if you're dating a girl that's the kind of girl you take home to your mom or the kind of girl that you keep from your keep away from your mom in other words you don't introduce your mom to her because she wouldn't approve that's the party girl the friends of benefits the sex playmate not somebody that's really got the value system for loyalty monogamy exclusivity that kind of thing and every guy's going to encounter the, these women but all too often what often causes a lot of the problems in relationships is guys just didn't do a good job of properly vetting the girl that they're with or they project their high interest onto the girl and they ignore her reality and so this a woman who's loyal believes in family she was raised right her parents raised her right i mean if you, you guys have had this experience when you're dating and you're trying to set a date one-on-one -on -one with a girl and then she invites friends or it always seems like when you try to get, be alone with her there's other people that are there maybe this girl's in your friend group and you want to date her, but every time you try to do something with her, somebody else gets invited or shows up or whatever. And that's what we call a blocker, a cock blocker or the clam slammer, if you will. And so when women want to prevent anything from happening, they will have a blocker there or make sure that there are blockers. So no inappropriate behavior can happen and no inappropriate advances can happen. Now, if a woman's in a relationship, that's typically what she's going to do. So say she, you know, everybody's going out for happy hour after work. She'll go out as a group and hang out. But when most of the people leave or the last of the girls leave, that's when she's going to leave. She's going to leave with them. She's not going to stay there one-on-one -on -one or just her and two or three dudes from work, especially when one or multiple of those dudes are hoping to sleep with her. Because the reality is us guys know how men typically are. And there's a lot of dudes out there, they don't give a shit that the girl is married. They don't care if she lives with her boyfriend. They just want to smash. And there's a percentage of women that are just disloyal and they don't have the value system for it. And if they're pissed off at their boyfriend or their husband, they're typically going to put themselves into a position where they can meet new guys and interview guys and potentially monkey branch from the guy that they're with to the new guy and what happens is they this is how a lot of cheating happens is like everybody goes out for happy hour and then what happens it's the one guy that wants to sleep with her and she stays there one-on-one -on -one. in other words she puts herself into these situations where she's one-on-one -on -one with a guy who wants to get in her pants she has too many drinks she agrees to go back to his place or just a type of girl that's working and there's a guy in the office he's a friend and you don't have to worry about him and yet she's meeting him out one-on-one -on -one for drinks a woman who values loyalty monogamy exclusivity is never going to do that because you got to think about the flip side if she's in a relationship and her friends family know she's married or she lives with her boyfriend or she has kids with her husband or whatever these women are typically not going to go out one-on-one -on -one with another dude and so you can imagine somebody that's concerned about loyalty and family is not going to go out and be in a restaurant one-on-one -on -one with some dude that is not her husband or her boyfriend that she happens to live with. I mean, can you imagine what would happen with a woman like that who values her relationship and then her boyfriend or her husband's parents happen to be at the same place and they're like, hey, I saw your wife last night or, hey, your mother and I were out having dinner and your wife was hanging out having drinks at the bar with some guy one-on-one -on -one and they didn't see us, but they sure seemed really friendly to one another. And I hate to be telling you this, son, but you might want to look into that. It's like she's, they seem to be more than just kind of co-workers or, 
So you can imagine a woman who values loyalty is not going to put herself in a position where something like that could potentially happen or she's out with a guy one-on-one and then your best friend and your best friend's wife or girlfriend happens to see your wife or girlfriend one-on-one with some dude that's not you. Women that don't really give a damn one way or another, they're going to go out, they're going to risk it. They're, they're not going to care about those things. The other thing is that you're married or you live together and your girlfriend wants to go out with, say she's got a new group of friends and all these friends from work or wherever, they're all single. And hey, it's girls night out at the nightclub. They got a VIP table, their bottle service, or one of the girls is hoping to get with some guy who's richer, older, whatever, has more money, and he's got a VIP table. And she and all of her single girlfriends are invited. And so two or three of your wife or your girlfriend's female friends who happen to be single are going to a club and they want her to come with them, but you're not invited, you're not allowed. Or you have a situation where it's girls night out, but there's a couple boyfriends and husbands there, but you're not invited. And so in those situations, it's that's not a good thing where you're not invited. Or it's you know girls only trip to las vegas for the weekend and your girlfriend or your wife and you're going to stay home with their kids or whatever is going to go to las vegas with women that are you barely know or maybe you don't know them at all and all of them are single and looking to go out there and hook up and yet your wife or girlfriend's going to go with them but you're not allowed to go that's not a good sign. A woman who's a lady and who values her family is going to be like, hey, my single girlfriends are gone. It'd be great if you could meet them. And why don't we go and we'll take the kids and we'll stay close by and I can, you know, do some things with them. But, you know, this way we can still, the whole family can be together and enjoy Vegas together. The bottom line is, is that a woman who's a lady is not going to put herself in position where something could happen. She's always going to have blockers around and if a woman is going out one-on-one or small groups where there's other dudes that it's well-known are going to be hitting on them, then obviously that's not appropriate. And so this is what you're, when you're, especially if you're still in the dating phase and you're trying to determine, maybe you've been together for a year or two. Because, I mean, the longer you're together, the, you want to create the conditions where your girl completely thinks you trust her. Because it's when she thinks she's got your trust 100% that you really see what you're dealing with. Uh, again, a guy who is married and got a loyal wife, she's just not going to go out one-on-one for some dude from work. She's not going to go one, go hang out one-on-one with a male client of hers and have dinner at 7 or 8 o'clock at night while you're home with the kids or you're home with the dogs or whatever by yourself. They're just not going to do these things. And so with that in mind... It's like, again, loyal women are going to have blockers. Disloyal women, there's going to be no blockers. And they'll give you a hard time. Oh, you're being jealous. You're being insecure. It's like, well, you want to go to a nightclub and you don't want me there. And you're going with nothing but single girls. And these single girls are going and invited you to go because some dude that one of them is trying to sleep with has a VIP table. It's like, why wouldn't you invite me to that? That That doesn't seem right. So... But a woman who's lazy is like, hey, my single girlfriends are gone and there's a VIP table and I want to go, but you, I want you to go with me. And she'll get you to go with her. And so those are the kind of things you want to look out for or be aware of. Because again, character is destiny. So let's go through this guy's email. It says, hey, Corey, I've been following you for three years and I'm on my 13th read of the book right now. It's really redefined how I look at the world and relationships and it's helped me secure and maintain a solid relationship with a girl I really dig for the last two years. I've heard from some other coaches and talking heads in the red pill space that are adamant that letting your girl go out for girls night out is putting your relationship at unnecessary risk. Well, it's with the caveats that I mentioned. Like I said, if it's girls night out and they're going to the nightclub and you're not invited, you're not allowed and you know she's going with women that are all single and none of them have boyfriends or whatever, and they don't want you there, that's not a good sign. I mean, the, the reality is going to clubs is kind of neat when you're young and you haven't experienced it, but if you're in a relationship or you're married, it's like typically you don't want to do those things. You'd rather hang out on a Friday night or a Saturday night with your significant other, maybe pop a bottle of wine, make some nice dinner together, maybe you go out to dinner or whatever, you come back, you'll 
you have a bottle of wine, a glass or two, you watch a movie, Netflix and chill or whatever it happens to be. Pop a movie in to keep the kids entertained while you and the wife go upstairs or whatever. That's typically what's going to be happening there. In other words, does your does your girlfriend act like she's still single? You know, so in a lot of these cases what I where there is cheating and lying and deviousness going on, you got women giving out their numbers, like say it's a hot bartender and she's giving out her number to a guy. Well, he's a regular and well, it's just a dinner and he's been coming, you know, to my bar for two years and he spends a lot of money and kind of feel like I owe him to go to dinner. It's like, no, you're my girlfriend. We live together. You're my wife. And you want to go hang out one on one with one of your regulars and go to a dinner. That sounds like a date. It's like, why would you even ask me that? How would you feel if the new hot secretary from work wanted to go out take me to dinner one-on-one because she's going through a difficult time in life. And, oh, by the way, she's got a crush on me and has been hitting on me for months and and has been trying to sleep with me. And uh, But, you know, we're going to go out and it's going to be just friendly. It's like your girl's not going to be cool with that. And so she can't expect you to be cool with stuff like that either. But it's important when these things come up that you have these conversations and hopefully they come up sooner rather than later in your relationship so in other words does your girlfriend or your wife does she act like she's single when you're not around is she giving out her number is she have a bunch of male orbiters does she have a bunch of exes that are hoping to still get with her at some point constantly reaching out to her every so months it's like and then meeting them out for drinks or dinner or whatever it's like a woman who's loyal is going to insist that you are there and she's not going to be hanging out one-on-one without a man who is not her boyfriend or her husband. She's not going to do it. And she'll hang out in a group setting, but if the group is you know, dissolving and there's just going to be one or two single dudes and just your girl, she's not going to stick around for that because she's excited to get home to her man. And if she's not excited to get home to your man, obviously you got problems. So he says, when I say girls' night, I mean going on a trip to Palm Springs or hitting up the bars with friends. Well, if she's going with friends, more than likely she should be inviting you but if these are friends you don't know and she insists that you not go, and it's like, why? Why would you not invite me to go? Like, wouldn't you be proud to show me off to all your girlfriend? Hey, this is my boyfriend. This is my husband. He's the love of my life. But she wants to go out and you're not there. You're not going to get introduced to all these strangers. That's not a good sign. Women in love want you there because they want to show you off to everybody. Women that don't give a shit are going to do things and they don't want you around. He says, these people seem to think allowing such behavior is weak and could result in dicey situations with other guys. So it's better to set a hard and firm boundary with your girl, no exceptions. Well, like I said, I just went through a long diatribe in the beginning of this video. And that's because, again, character is destiny. We're trying to find out what are we dealing with? A loyal woman is just not going to put herself in a position where she's alone with a dude that wants to sleep with her. A disloyal woman will do that and make excuses, call you jealous, say you got problems or whatever and blame it on you. He says, I can't help but find this advice is hypocritical. I love and trust my girl, and I know she feels the same about me. And I would never be on board with her telling me I couldn't go out to the pub with my best guy friends. So it feels unfair for me to demand that she stay home. Well, again, that's not what we're talking about. Her going out with her girlfriends and just having a few drinks as a group, that's fine. But when it's just when it starts to be like she's going out every week with the same group of friends and you don't know them and all these girls are, are single – and you're never invited and she doesn't want you to go, that's not a good sign. A woman who loves you and is proud of you wants everybody to know that you're her man and she's proud to show you off. And a girl that doesn't give a shit, she's not going to want you there. So these are things you want to pay attention to. He says, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this topic. He says, thankfully my girl isn't much for the partying these days, but every now and then an event will come up and I'm wondering what the proper way to handle it would be. Wouldn't it be insecure and controlling for me to imply that I don't trust her out at a bar with other men well as long as she's there with a group because again all of all of us guys have had this experience at one point we wanted to go out with a girl we wanted to date a girl and she's in fighting friends and the friends are there to be blockers the friends are there to get in the way of a seduction happening and so when she doesn't want blockers there that communicates that she's open to potentially a seduction and doing stuff one-on-one with a particular guy or, or a group of guys for that matter he says, or is setting the boundary a stronger position to take? If she places her trust in me, shouldn't I do the same? Well, again, based on what are the conditions, who are these people that she wants to go hang out with? And what is the context 
of their hanging out and what is the relationship with all of these kinds of people. If there's going to be plenty of blockers there to prevent any kind of seduction or some dude getting too drunk and hanging all over your girl or whatever. I mean, you guys have also probably had this experience where you're talking to a cute girl in a bar and maybe it's not going well or it is going well. And then her, her three friends come over because she's had a little too much to drink and then they drag her away because they know she's probably going to go home with you. It's Again, it really is a, a case-by-case basis. Is your girl putting herself in a position where she can get seduced and hit on by other men or is she keeping other guys at a distance? That's pretty much the bottom line. Loyal women keep them in a distance. Disloyal women are like, hey, they enjoy the attention from other guys. And it's usually the girls from broken homes. They have a bad relationship with their dad or they never knew their dad or they have a non-existent relationship with them, whatever it happens to be. So if you've got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. <music>